Yeah, yeah, no. Came out of the dipper in uh, extremely nice shape. See, it even, uh, yeah, I thought it would eat all this paint off of it, but uh, most of the gunk just got consumed. But yeah, no, as you can see, these corresponding parts. My other fear of it turning that pot metal into nothing is uh, easily. Yeah. Oh. oh, and then this carburetor kit that we had. Oh, yeah. It's clearly labeled Chevrolet six cylinder 1937 and up, but it's not the right kit. It's yeah, for no. something completely different. So we got to looking, and of course, there's nothing like this in that carb. And uh, I don't Gaskets. know, I think the base gasket is the only thing that might yeah, be. So there's usable. no sense. So we'll put this back in the pile. Yeah, yeah, tape it back up. And uh, perhaps it. Uh, what a bummer. But the carb's in mint shape, so you don't need a kit, anyways. Yeah, yeah, this gasket's good. This one is perished, but uh, easily reproducible. Some mm -hmm. form of a cork circle. But, uh, okay, well, I'll let uh, Jim get to it. He's going to put it back together. Oh, what do you got planned there, Jim? Oh, well, let me just sneak by you here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, being a coffee drinker, generally I don't have much of a use for a cup of warm water. But, uh, <laughs> show everybody at home a quick little tip with uh, a float. I don't know, they float, obviously, but uh, sometimes they don't, and that's when you run into trouble. So, more like a sunk. yeah, yeah, more of a sunk, like a ship. It always remains floating, and you're kind of in good shape. But uh, when you take them apart, you can kind of listen for fuel. But since this one probably hasn't been, had fuel on it in it since, oh, I don't know, several, several years, it would have all evaporated and you'd be left wondering, well, how do I know if it's good or not? You do, you take your warm water, not scalding, because you can burst your float, and you just submerge it. And as that uh, warm water warms up the air inside the float, if you had any sort of leaks or holes, it would kind of bubble out. You'd see a small stream of bubbles. And if you do have a hole, usually it's like a little pin hole and you can just poke through it with a, uh, a pin or something just to enlarge the hole. And since it's brass, you just solder it up and carry on. A, uh, another tip, I guess, or good practice is that this uh, jet of whatever capacity it's for is plugged. And you kind of, if you look up to light, you can see light through it in a clear circle, you're good. And if not, well, you've got to clean it. And so, the uh, nice little thing to use here is you just take stranded automotive wire and you can just kind of poke your way through. So, copper, I think, being softer than brass, you're not going to cause any trouble. Some people use like tip cleaners for torches and stuff like that and I think you can inadvertently really uh, hot rod your carburetor. All right, gang, there it is. Jim got it all put back together. Had a few trials and tribulations, but uh, a bit of a complicated up. carb, yeah. But we uh, we opted against restoring it on the outside just for originality's sake for now because it'll kind of blend under the hood like it's never been touched, you know? Yeah. But uh, a person could always completely restore it and yeah, paint it and everything kind of a in resto the mod carb it's yeah new inside and but the uh, throttle shafts perfect the throttle plates perfect so it should uh, should be a nice car anytime we have issue with that too we'll uh, 
we can make throttle shafts and bushings and plates or whatever to save them. But uh, there it is. It's kind of a thing of thing of mechanical beauty. This carburetor. Then we get that sediment bowl cleaned up and throw her back on the car. Okay, good. Well, Matt's going to show us here uh, how to service your spark plugs beyond just throwing them out and uh, buying new ones. Yeah. Well, we get this little Champion spark plug uh, cleaner and tester, so we'll have a quick look at that. First, uh, just have a look at these spark plugs. I don't know if you can see how small they are, but these are Chevy. And I just got a, uh, a high-speed spark plug for a Model A Ford here for comparison. As you can see, they're pretty small spark plugs. There's no comparison. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny, isn't it? Must be a low speed plug then. Yeah. We got, uh, yeah, I was just, Chevy had these until 36, and then they went away. Uh, well, this is. Regap two. every 4,000 miles. How many oh. times have people done that today? <laughs> Zero. Right? Neat though. So we'll put the high speed plug away because we're working on a Chevy. Yeah. So, we, uh, First thing we're going to look at is that these are kind of corroded looking and poor. They're not terrible, but they're not great. They're old. Yeah, no, they don't look awful. Yeah, so this little machine is kind of cool. We'll change this out. A little uh, adapter. So the rubber, there's an abrasive in here, and it's like a little sandblaster for your plugs. So we just are connected to air. We throw the plug in like so, and I'll just hit the abrasive blast. And I'll just wiggle it around, clean off any of the carbon and dirt and junk. Then just hit it with air. Try and blow some of the dust off. So, Look at that. much cleaner. Oh, significantly. You see the porcelain again? Yeah. Yeah. No. So, we'll check the gap, but uh, it's kind of interesting. We've got this old book here from 48. The gap is 40 thou on these, which is quite a bit more than I thought it would be. Yeah, no, I think usually like 35 is kind of generous. Is, yeah. yeah, but here it is, right 20. here it says, and the gap is 40 thou. Oh, there we go. Yeah. There's a man gapping it. Yeah, there he is gapping, and there's a little 40 there, see? Oh, okay, wow. So they really but he, are. that's a pretty, I don't know, that's a pretty large spark plug compared to what we're working <laughs> with here. <laughs> he could have small hands, mind you. <laughs> well, so we get a little tune-up kit going. We'll oh, get our spark plug gapper out here, right here, and it says 40 thou, so we got the champion. Holy champion plugs. Champion, champion, champion all champion. Yeah, except for the host. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll gap them. Got this little gapper gauge here too, which is kind of cool. Ah, there's a whole bunch of neat stuff in there, but we'll, uh, we'll start with the gap, so we'll just check this gap. I'm getting ahead of myself because, uh. Oh yeah, they're a little big, see? Ah. Let's wheel out this deal here. Okay. Perfect. Nice and tight, sort of tight, but not too tight. Yeah, no? yeah not forcing it. There you go. Oh, Put that down. Now, we thread the plug in. I don't know if you'll be able to see this good, but this plug goes into this adapter, which simulates your cylinder. And this is kind of how we test them now. If they fail here, we'll have to get new ones anyway. So we'll set this gap thing here. We don't have 40, so we'll just put it in the middle of, I don't know, a little over 35, between 35 and 44, so somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah. And we put this electrode on, or this spark plug wire on. So we zap it. Let's see if I can see the zap. There you go. There we go. Nope. Just like, you know, just makes the hell. There it is. That's okay. That will, like I said, that'll be fine for now. Anyway, that's how you'd rebuild and test spark plugs. Thanks for tuning in on today's yeah. episode of Will It Spark?